about myself. I felt wrong. I just felt like there was so much going on in the world. There is so much going on in the world. It really made me kind of think differently about music. And what I did <coughs> during the pandemic is I found time to, to, to write, but I couldn't write. So what I did is I just worked on playing and finding that love of playing and exploring and challenging myself and trying to get better at the guitar. And uh, so I'd spend, I'd do like 15 minutes every day because I knew I didn't have any more time than that. I'm just playing without like an idea of what I'm gonna do with what I make. So there was no frustration if nothing came out. There was, there was no you know, disappointment um, and all that. And I found it to be amazingly rewarding. And I do 15, I come back and I'd be present for the rest of the day. Like really tied me in to the gods, um, if you will. So yeah, and, and so I ended up starting a metal band and brought my old hardcore band back together. You know, for those of you that don't know, I used to be a screamer in a hardcore band before I was an actor. That was my life. You know, we toured and wrote records. And I basically harassed them to send me five instrumental tracks and let me yell about stuff over top of them. So, yeah, we were going to put out on the label uh, sometime. We're going to record in the studio in a couple months. And uh, yeah, so I have like three records I'm working on at the moment. Um, it's been a lot of behind the scenes stuff. And I've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed not feeling like I need to constantly be participating in the engine, creating content. It's my least favorite word in the world. It's like sauerkraut. <laughs> Thank you. If not Bonnie, who could you see Enzo ending up with? I don't think anyone. Uh, I think he's too, you know, yeah. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> Hi, my name is Natalia, and I'm Nicole. Hi. And we wanted to ask if the accent was your choice or the show's choice, and if you could do the accent. I was coming. Hello, though. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Nicole. Hello, Nicole. It's been a while, my dear. A long time since I've actually had to put this on. So I'll answer the question like this, and then this is the last time I'll be doing the accent for you. No. So when I auditioned, it was with an American accent, and also I did another tape, which was in a British accent. And I didn't know until like, a week before which accent I was going to do. And um, even when they booked my travel, I think it was like, wait, hang on, I need to prepare, you know? My character is so thin, the accent is the character at the moment, so <laughs> please tell me. And anyway, uh, upon finding out that it was British, I was very excited. I'd been living in London for uh, about eight years by then, and so, it was the first time I was going to be doing, actually that's a lie, I've done, I've done, I've done it once before, but it was the first time I was going to be doing my accent on, on television, which I, and as a role, longer than just a pilot, which I've done before. So it was exciting, you know, it's, it's, it's always enjoyable to challenge yourself. And it, I actually, to be honest, felt a bit more comfortable doing this accent at the time than my American accent because I've been living in London for eight years. My wife is English, all my friends were English or, uh, I don't know, uh, from Europe, right? So, yeah, goodbye now. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Hello. What was your favorite scene to film? On this show? 
Yeah. Okay. You see where Enzo is going to a sauerkraut festival. <laughs> <laughs> to dig deep. <laughs> um, hey, at least it made some of you laugh too. <laughs> the other ones are like, get over it. It's not a stand up act. <laughs> Serious questions about a shovel plow. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Taking all lightly. Um, favorite scene to film? Hmm. You know, I, I'm going to go back to this because I, I said this a couple times, and I think it's true, but I think it was the whole sequence of, of Enzo and Bonnie in the cabin, Enzo's cabin, where he like loses his humanity. Um, he, I mean, to me that was one whole movie, you know, by itself, because we were isolated from the rest of the gang. It was like, in, in your head as an actor, you're following your trajectory, so for me that whole story was a, a film. In, in my head, you know. And um, what I loved about it is that it had all the aspects of a film. So it had a beginning, a middle, you know, the, an end, it had a aha moment, it had some catalyst, it had some danger. It basically had the entire making. So it should have been a film. Just do a film. <laughs> yeah. that. Um, anyway, uh, that one, just because it was like also at a, at, at a point with me on the show where I was completely relaxed in the character, was able to just do my thing, and I was actually playing a lot more than I had been the previous season, so I was like just in the zone, and Kat and I's work together was so good, I mean, I think we're out. She's a very invested, 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 she's extremely invested. It's terrible. Right? <laughs> no, extremely invested actress, and um, we had great working rapport together. So those that that whole sequence is just a joy, and we really found that together and blocked a lot of stuff on, on our own, and uh, really worked hard. I think it paid off. So that, that, that's probably my favorite parts of the show. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kara. Um, my question was, is there any like character traits that Enzo has that you think you can relate to? So these, these, this question is, is always a tough one because it's like, not only because it was a long time ago, but just because when you play a character, it's, it's difficult sometimes to know where, what's a part of you and what's just on the paper, because you're, like I said, you're making those points connect. You're figuring it out. You're growing as a character. And in a sense, you have to grow as a person, too. It's what you're learning sometimes transmits. But uh, there's so much that's similar, and so much that's different, I guess. But it's like, not to go too much to acting rhetoric, but, you know, in Stanislavski, this is the the magic if. If these are my circumstances, if I am a vampire, if I love this person, this is what I would I would do. So it becomes you, your choices. And, um, I think there's there's a lot we have in common because of that. I mean we just oh shit, it's my wake up alarm. <laughs> Just a little bit. Um, er, am I about to wake up? This is great. <laughs> snooze. It's snooze. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Uh, who was your favorite person to film with? Myself. <laughs> uh, um, okay, well, Cap. Because we had to do so much together, we had a good rapport, and it was she was always on top of her shit as well, which which for me is is really important. You know, when you're working with somebody like that's that's the basic work. If you don't know your lines, you can't hit your mark, whatever. Like you know, maybe work on the Hallmark Channel for a bit, and you can kind of come up with 
<laughs> oh. oh, yeah, I said that shit. Okay, I'd like to have a chat. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, um, do you normally like to uh, watch the shows that you're in if you want? Uh, just to see if it's thought of? That's a good question. Um, I do. I do, and sometimes it's excruciating. <laughs> I'm sure y'all feel me, like when you hear your voice back, sometimes you're like, oh my God, sound like that. <laughs> Or if you watch yourself on camera, you're like, I'm throwing that shirt away. You know, there, there's an aspect of it that's, that's painful, but I think there comes a time when you're able to push past that pain of self-analysis, I suppose, and turn it into positive reinforcing. So you're going, okay, that works, that doesn't. And you just kind of start looking at it like a... Uh, Like, uh, I don't know, like you're editing. You know, you're editing your choices in your craft. So you're going, I can push that more. If I'm angry, I can be angry. It wasn't angry enough. Or like, that crying there looked fake as fuck. You need to work on it. Or whatever, like, you know. Or you ugly crying. You really need to work on it. <laughs> There's some, some, some characters in that show, actually. <laughs> There's been, there's been an array of ugly crying on that show. <laughs> that. Anyway, it's okay to be ugly when you cry. But, you know. Ugly is a terrible word to use, actually. I'm so sorry I said that. Yeah. I don't know why I'm facing. Probably because I didn't like what I said there. That's right. I didn't like my answer, is the question. Is the answer to your question? Metaphysically. What was the question? <laughs> um, the question was, uh, oh, watching yourself, yes. <laughs> I do, so yeah, I, I do, but I don't like watch it over and over. I literally, I watch it once, get out, no, I, sometimes I watch it twice, because the first time is often so excruciating that I haven't paid attention to anything. And I want to follow the story, right, to see how the fluid, because the first time you're watching, you're literally watching your own choices. I mean, but it's hard to push past that. When you do, it's it's much easier. Now it's like, I don't even think about it. If I didn't like how a scene went, it's like, oop, tough. Get the next one, you know? Anyway. All right.